as you know, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro or Mac Mini with the M1, M2 or M3 chips only supports up to two external displays. Today, we are going to test out a docking station, which will allow us to have three external displays. This is the iVanky Fusion Dock Pro 1 Plus. It has three HDMI 2.0 4K at 60 Hertz, four USB type A at 10 gigabit, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection, two USB type C 10 gigabit, and an SD card slot ST 4.0. This is the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. At this moment, connected via one single cable to the iVanky docking station, the Fusion Dock Pro 1 Plus. And we have three displays instead of the limitation that we have with only the laptop, which will allow us to have two individual external displays. Now, one of the tests that I usually do on this kind of device is to disconnect everything and then reconnect to have in terms of example, if we leave our workstation and then when we come back if the docking station and the operating system will allow us to have all our windows open exactly where they were and here it is i actually did put in this one here so that i could hide my serial number but everything just goes exactly to the place we have 4k at 60 hertz maximum on the three external displays now in terms of accessories we have an ssd right over here which we will test out the speed test we also have a keyboard and a mouse that we can use like any other peripheral and if i go here to a browser and if i search for portugal which is where i live uh, in the area of Algarve, we will find uh, when we can browse the web. Now, having in mind that I'm disconnected from the Wi-Fi connection, so I'm using the Ethernet port here, which we are going to test out to check out if we can handle 2.5 gigs. And at the same time, we can play with the browser on the several windows so that we can check out that everything is running smoothly. So we have here three external displays connected to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So we are getting more or less 2.5 gig uh, connection. And here we are getting the 2.5. So 2000 megabits per second on download and reaching the 2500 megabits per second on download, which is the maximum. Now here I will start and stop the speed test because I was testing out the SD cards earlier on for my Puchkis channel. Now let's check out the bandwidth of this USB Type-C port right over here, which is 10 gigabit. We have a SSD, the iFro V10 connected, which is this one here. So if we select this one and start the speed test, we will get roughly 1,600 megabytes on writes and 900 more or less megabytes on reads. Now the maximum of this SSD is about 1,600 to 2,000 on writes and 1,000 on reads. So we have a little bit more than 10 gigabit right over here on this port. Now we also have the option to use USB type A 10 gigabit and at the back also more to USB type A 10 gigabit. I also connected a SD card, so let's test that one out. It has SD 4.0, which means that we can go up to 312 megabytes per second reads and writes. We will have some spikes right over here, or spikes we want for size, and it's just a peak speed because the SD card will only go up to about 180, 200 megabytes per second reads and on writes. So we are more than capable and we could use faster SD card right over here because we could go up to 312 more or less. So basically that is it in terms of speed test, everything working as it should. And the battery is charging at this moment 95% because it will charge up to 100 watts to our laptop. And this one consumes about 60 watts maximum. So it's more than capable. And we still have here another USB type C port with power delivery. Now testing out with the MacBook Air with the M1 chip and as we had with the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro we can work with the three external displays up to 4K at 60 hertz. And I've also added here my Pixel 9 Pro connected to this port, which will charge up to 20 watts of power delivery. So more than enough to charge our phone. We can also check out here the screen arrangement, which we could change. So if I click on any of these, it will show me, but I've done a few tests and it's working exactly as it was on the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro. Now I've connected a Apple Mac mini with the M1 chip and 
And if we take a look at the back, we can see that we only have the power source and also the USB type C to USB type C Thunderbolt in this particular case here on the Mac. And I've made some tests, so I'm getting the same results as we were getting on the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro and also the MacBook Air with M1. So I can work with three uh, displays. Of course, we don't have an internal display right over here, but everything works great up to 4K at 60 hertz. I've got Wi-Fi disconnected. Well, I've run the test as well here. Everything is working great, the same speeds. I still have my phone charging here, all the SSDs and the SD cards that we have connected. So working great on the Apple Mac Mini with the M1 chip. So we have tested quite a few docking stations here, which will help us to have a lot of peripherals and everything connected that will allow us also to disconnect one single cable and take our laptop. But with three displays for the Apple M1, M2 or M3 chips, this is the first one and it's working great as we saw on the test that we have performed. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way and if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.